There's warnings today that the already dangerous summit of Mount Everest is getting more and more risky after yet another death on the world's highest peak. An American man died yesterday on his way down from the summit. Bad weather and a shorter summit window than usual is being blamed for this year's fatalities. But there are also questions over whether some climbers should be on the mountain in the first place. Kiwi mountaineer Mark Ingalls became the first double amputee to reach the top of Mount Everest in 2006. He now runs charity tours to Nepal, but avoids Everest Base Camp in favour of more remote and not-so-crowded places. He told me some operators are under increasing pressure to deliver the summit experience. People have an expectation that if they, if they think they're fit and able, then they will be able to get up there. And, and this is irrespective of the number of people, because what happens is that with altitude sickness, with hypoxia, with all the other things, quite often you don't understand what's happening to you, but um, the competent people around you can see what's happening and you have to turn people around. You know, it's, uh, I've been on the mountain when we've had to scream and yell at, um, at members of our own expedition to turn around. You know, they survived, they hadn't have turned around, they wouldn't have, but at the time, you know, they can't see it. And so it's it's terribly difficult. And then you get the situation where, you know, on that one day, on the, um, on the well, two days really, the 22nd and 23rd of May, when it had been huge winds before then, so you've got this um, this whole group of people sort of um, accordion up, you know, just um, uh, two or three days worth of summits, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Then they all try and go, and you've got people that are totally unprepared and unsupported. You know, the reasons to die uh, are on up high on on a mountain like Everest is is bad luck being in the wrong place at the wrong time in Avalanche. Uh, altitude sickness, and a lot of that um, comes around going too fast and, and poor management of people and not recognising altitude sickness. Some just really mm. bad luck, um, which is uh, quite often strokes um, and similar. Yeah, we heard that there were some year, heart attacks there um, the other day, and that was a cause of death. And I, I guess those sorts of things can't be predicted, and uh, I guess they can be prepared for in a way. But um, where do you see this going, Mark? I mean, it's it's becoming more and more popular, people dying. I don't know whether they're dying in greater numbers, but, I mean, what are your concerns about where this is going? They're not dying in greater numbers, but what they're doing is, is, is the, the experience is just gone down the tube really it's the i think um this year there were 381 climbing permits issued for everest and so for each one of those there is um a sherpa um a guide mountaineer that will be with each one of those people so you know that's um you know, almost 700 people up there and that's too many if you've only got two or three days this year the jet stream's been really low and it just didn't move off um they had the, the 23rd and 24th of May when they could summit and you just had you know, 500 people lined mm. up wanting to do it. So um, what do you do then to control it? Another... Because I guess you guys um, don't want to be looking like you're shutting out the, the, the smaller operators and just creating more business for yourselves. But I guess what you're saying is it's unsafe what they're doing. I mean, how do you bring about change there? Oh, I think um, the, the, and it's really good to hear people like Guy Cotter and Lydia in the media um, speaking up because it's really important. It's about um, finding the balance between, you know, mountaineering. You know, most of us are anarchists um, at, on a good day, and it's finding the the balance between regulation and uh, and and you know people's right to go out and you know and, and have a great um, uh, a great experience. It's just, I, I think it's been a real challenge for the management of Everest. By the, um, it's a tough place to manage, but it needs to be managed better. And it just comes down to the management of people. And the, the authorities the in, in in Kathmandu, with the the authorities there, uh, have they said anything about um, whether they're likely to uh, bring about any more stringent um, conditions on groups that are organising these treks? Um, well, there are, but it's just whether or not they're being regulated. Um, I had meetings last year when I was in Nepal uh, with my trekking group with the Minister of Tourism and others, because you may remember last year they um, decided that they'd ban um, uh, double amputees and blind people from climbing Everest when uh, you know, I had to suggest that it was the double amputees and the, and the blind and the armless and um, a few of us others that are going up there 
that are far more um, experienced, uh, resourced, and competent than than all of the others. It's don't um, some of the directions just been um, they're looking in the wrong direction. They need to look more in the direction of the the actual. Um, expedition organisers. You know, there are expedition organisers out there at the moment already advertising for next year and saying how fantastic they are, and some of them have lost um, multiple people on Everest this year. It's like, come on guys, it's just not right. Kiwi mountain- mountaineer Mark Ingalls talking to me from Hammer Springs.